Hello everyone and welcome to another week. First and foremost, I would like to thank everyone who made a comment following our last video. We received fantastic advice on how to approach the uh, kill problem. So thank you very much for that. Now I have to warn you right from the start that this episode is going to be quite different. It's because it actually marks a year since we came down River Crouch and docked in the Fanbridge Marina, which means it marks a year since we started a refit. And we would like to share with you a breakdown of all the costs we have incurred so far during this refit. This will also include how much we paid for the boat. We've never mentioned that before and although it's no big secret, we just never had a chance. So yeah, you won't see us doing any sanding or fairing this week. <sighs> Lucky for us. I will be talking in British pounds because we are based in the UK. However, at the end of the video, I will also give you a total in uh, US dollars. So let's get straight down to answering the big question of how much we pay for Squalo. Well, she was up on the market for £45,000, but that's not how much we paid for her. We actually managed to bring the price down. Firstly, because we didn't have that much money. And secondly, after sea trial and general inspection of the boat, we sort of tallied up all the repairs we will have to do. So we knew right there and then that we will need to invest a lot of money into her before we are confident that she can safely take us on a voyage around the world and that we can do it as of grit as we possibly can. We believe she is the right uh, boat for it. She's well capable of circumnavigation and she has a good reputation of a, well, a tough cruiser, if you like. Although she wasn't in the worst shape possible, for buying an old boat, you have to keep in mind that you're going to find some well, surprises uh, down the line. At that time, I guess we didn't even realize how many surprises we're going to find. But after some back and forth negotiation, we managed to bring the price down to £30,000. I guess that's pretty fair. But we didn't buy Squalo in uh, the UK. We actually found her in Gibraltar. If you want to know the reasons why we were in Gibraltar at that time, you have to go back to our first videos. We kind of shortly explained that. But anyway, so she was in Gibraltar and that's why we bought her. But before we set off uh, towards the UK, we wanted to make sure that everything works on board. And also we've got like basic safety gear, and in general, just uh, familiarize ourselves with, uh, with the boat before setting off on a long journey. So we did spend some money in uh, Gibraltar. We changed the running rigging for the most part. We had the standing rigging check done. We also had the basic uh, engine service done as well as uh, the life raft uh, uh, service. Instead of buying a new one, it was good to just do a basic service. And in terms of the safety gear, we got uh, new flares because the ones that were on board were already expired. We uh, got bolt cutters, life jackets, uh, fire extinguishers, fire blankets. Anything else? Foghorn? Did I mention first aid kit? We then spent a week in the boatyard in La Nina just before setting off. And we serviced our seacocks there. We also did some repairs to the hull. And the last thing we did, we applied anti-foul. But to be honest with you, the biggest cost for us over there was uh, new uh, navigation equipment. Squala was advertised and she came with the whole range, the whole myriad of um, devices used for navigation, such as Raymarine electronic chart plotter, instruments, radar, VHF radio, autopilot, but sadly, majority of them didn't work. And also one that did work initially, which was the Raymarine chart plotter, just before setting off, it, the screen stopped responding, so we had to replace it. So we acquired a new Garmin chart plotter yeah, yeah. with electronic charts. That's really nice. Raymarine VHF radio with AIS receiver only, Garmin GPS, Nimia 2000 kit, and the Garmin sail pack, which included wind transducer, two marine instrument displays and a transducer. It's actually funny because the day we were leaving Gibraltar, we still didn't have that uh, sail pack from Garmin. There was a bit of a mishap. All this was happening during COVID. So uh, yeah, delivery times were crazy and 
well, we never got it. We only got it once we reached the UK. So during the whole uh, trip, we could uh, only estimate the wind strength uh, by looking at the sea state. Obviously during the night, it was a little bit more tricky or impossible, but we survived without it. Now this brings us down to the cost here in the UK. If you've been watching our videos, you have probably noticed that we started off, well, from gutting her out naturally, which doesn't cost any money. And then we moved on to uh, repairing the hole. Those sort of projects require a lot of fiberglass mat and uh, epoxy resin and hardener. We also used quite a lot of additives such as ferrin compound, milled fiberglass and barrier coat. Now all this time we've been using West System and we do like this brand. It's very straightforward to uh, use even for a complete beginner. Uh, they have a comprehensive guide and it pretty much covers every repair you can imagine on a GRP boat and not only on a GRP boat. Uh, we can include a link down below if you uh, want to have a look at it. And it doesn't have that uh, pungent smell like other brands may have. It is by no means a sponsored advert. Uh, we just genuinely like to use this brand. Now other bits and bobs required to work with epoxy are paint brushes, spatulas, cups, stirring sticks, gloves, acetone, paper towels. And although all those uh, bits and bobs don't cost so much, we go through quite a lot. So altogether we spent 380 pounds during the year. On a yacht uh, during a refit like this, as you can imagine, there's a lot of sanding involved. So yes, one thing we keep ordering and using quite a lot is a sandpaper or specifically an abranet from a brand called Mirka. It is more expensive uh, than a traditional uh, sandpaper, but it does last uh, much longer and it's quite efficient and it doesn't get clogged as much. So over the long run, I suppose it prob probably works out the same. We spent a whopping 726 pounds for sandpaper alone. I just couldn't believe it. Now all this sanding, all, all, doing all the repairs to the keel and also the top sides uh, meant that we were getting closer and closer to achieving our goal, which, which was um, getting her top sides painted, but also applying uh, the copper coat uh, before the end of this year. But as you know, we have come across some uh, problems with the keel and that has created a bit of delay. But by the time we came across those issues, we already ordered both the paint and uh, obviously the primer with it and the copper coat for her bottom. I know, I know we were way too optimistic about it. Anyway, it's done and dusted. We've already spent the money. One thing to note, a uh, copper coat has a shelf life of 12 months. Yeah, fingers crossed, Squalor's Bottom is ready next year. Now, another big project that's on top of our list of projects um, coming up is uh, finishing the teak deck or, well, restoring the original teak deck. In order to do that, we first had to extract a lot of uh, screws, about over a thousand, and then replace them, and also remove and replace all the teak bunks. The next step uh, on teak deck repair will be replacing the caulking. We will be using Sika Flex caulking. A Sika Flex uh, caulking requires a primer to be applied first um, in the seams or in the grooves, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's actually quite expensive. We haven't acquired the um, caulking yet, but we did buy the primer. Just to give you an idea, a bottle of uh, 250 ml uh, primer here in the UK costs uh, 55 pounds on average. This has a coverage of about just over a square meter. But I managed to find, um, find it a little bit cheaper in France and they are sitting and waiting for their time. So let's move to a little bit more expensive stuff that we bought and uh, those are seacocks. Uh, we bought the True Design Composite Seacocks. The original ones we had on board were Blake's and they were all completely seized. We managed to open a few of them, a couple of them wouldn't even budge. Uh, so after putting a little bit more force, uh, the handle uh, broke. So yeah, there was, we had no choice but to change them. And yeah, we, changing Blake's for new ones, it's out of question. They are way too expensive. We acquired four of the True Design so far and we will need another four or five. 
We also decided to equip Squalo with um, a bow thruster. We got one from Vitus and the price includes um, remote control, touch panel, cable, battery main switch and a tunnel. We had it fitted by a professional and that cost us £850. So yes, I agree, that's quite a bit chunk out of our budget, but I do hope that um, it will make life much easier in the future when maneuvering with, in small marinas. Now something I'm personally quite proud of is acquiring those um, port lights we've shown you, uh, the ones that uh, are fitted from cockpit to the galley. Well, we did save a buck or two there. They cost 400 pounds. Well, not each, together. So two of them cost 400 pounds. I think it's a pretty good deal. Having winches re instead of replacing them also saved us quite a bit of money. Just to give you an idea, the biggest winch we've got is the Lumer 48, I believe, would cost around two and a half thousand pounds. For chroming three of the winches, we spent um, 450? Yes, we spent 450 pounds in total. At first I thought it was, it was quite expensive, but when I looked how much new winch costs, um, yeah, I quickly um, recovered from an idea of getting new ones. Our beautiful uh, Bulwark Fair Leads uh, costs 144 for a pair. Now speaking of stainless steel, uh, let's get down to um, our electrical switch panel and also the um, engine panel from the cockpit. Now both of them uh, were designed together, well we worked together with a friend of ours on the design, uh, but actually it was put together by Greg, uh, especially for us and yes we are grateful for that. Both of them cost £360. That was money well spent, if you ask me. I would like to also include in this breakdown uh, the cost of engine refurbishment. Uh, we took it to Poland to have it done there. And uh, although it's not finished yet, and I don't know the, the total uh, cost of it, uh, I can tell you how much we've spent so far, and we are actually nearing the end. Uh, so yeah, uh, for all the parts and for reconditioning of some parts, we have spent uh, 200, sorry, 2,600 pounds. And that includes the cost of transport, because as you remember, we uh, took it there ourselves. So we hired a van and we had to pay the ferry, obviously put some fuel in the tank. But once it's done and ready to come back home, um, I think it will be really good to share with you the total cost. And I'm, I'm very interested to see how much it's gonna uh, come up to. Uh, and we would like to compare it to how much it would be here in the, in the UK and whether it was actually worth uh, doing it over there. It would be interesting to see. I know the total you see uh, on screen right now is actually quite high already, but it's not over yet. There's something else we need to add, something we pay for every month and that's um, the storage fees. So Squalo is, um, well, she's kept in the boatyard and um, the fee includes boat lift uh, every time we have to move her, so when we move her from outside storage to inside. Each, each time we have to lift uh, Squalo to uh, move that support from underneath the keel and sort of shift it to another place so we can carry on with the repair. That also is an extra charge. Um, cradle hire, the cradle is the support that holds her all the time. Um, electricity and, um, am I forgetting something? Mast step. Uh, storage of the mast, um, engine uh, haul out. I have tried to include everything in this breakdown, but I'm sure I've missed out uh, a couple of things here and there. The total for the year is uh, somewhere here on screen. And I know that some of you might be thinking now that we are absolutely bonkers for spending so much money on an old boat. The money we've spent on Squalo by now uh, would probably buy us uh, a boat that's a little bit better equipped. Any boat we would buy for that price would probably need an upgrade. But we are very happy with Squalo. We know that she is well capable, that she is a very sturdy boat and uh, yeah, we love her. Despite all the moaning, we really enjoy doing this refit. Uh, it's our passion and uh, we, yeah, we are working towards our dreams. I really hope that uh, if, if you are watching and uh, if you're thinking of buying an old boat and doing a similar refit that 
we didn't put you off. It does take a lot of money, effort, time. Literally, it takes over your whole life, to be honest with you. But I do hope that in the end, it will be worth it. We have been asked before, uh, how long do we think this refit is going to take? And uh, at first we used to say, well, a year or two maximum. But to be honest with you, at the moment, I can't really say. So we better enjoy the whole process. There's a long list uh, of projects we want to complete before we, are, we become full-time cruisers. So we definitely want to replace the hatches, um, new standing rigging, solar arch with David Arm system for a dinghy. We would also like to install all the equipment that will allow us to be, well, to live as off-grid as possible. And that is a water maker, solar panel, uh, wind generator. We will also like to have a new battery bank and quite a substantial one. Uh, battery chargers, um, instruments uh, for cockpit and for nav station. Um, heating system on boat and also insulate the boat. Uh, I mean, whew, the list goes on. I, I don't even want to think how much it's all going to cost. All right, everybody, let's wrap up this video here and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. But before you go, like this video, subscribe, turn notifications on. See you next week.